Jamie, tell me a little bit about some of the typical challenges that organisers face when they're trying to improve um, the environmental footprint, say, or their green supply chain. What do they typically come across that, that can be quite frustrating, for instance, that you might be able to give them a tip on? Sure. So I would say, I mean, one of the, the greatest challenges and also one of the keys to success is engaging leadership um, early, early on. So our first step is always a visioning session to make sure that we have the commitment across all levels of an organization and, and especially at the leadership level. So Jeff was fantastic in that um, we had, a, we had a, a full day where the leadership team um, from the Global Climate Action Summit sat. Not only did we educate them on what, how far the events industry has come in adoption of these standards, in particular ISO 2012-1, um, but we made sure that they understood that we are going to implement across every single level and piece of this event plan, from transportation to energy to hotels to registration to name badges and lanyards. Um, and we got that buy-in from the day one point. Um, so I think if you don't, that it can be a challenge if you don't have that leadership commitment um, and you notice it later on because every other la layer of the organization looks to see, um, to get that backing from leadership. Yeah. I thought about it from sort of a more typical business perspective where you're focusing on both sort of horizontal and vertical integration, where you're ensuring that every component of your organization isn't just implementing the, the goals that you've laid out and, you know, sort of, you know, you know, ticking all the, all the boxes, but that they're all communicating with one another on a regular basis and that you're ensuring that everything that you've set out to do is being done, but that there's, there's synergies that, that exist you know, within any organization. And so you have to be sort of able to readily identify those. So you know, hotels impact, uh, impact transportation sort of, you know, and so on. Let's talk about um, accountability. And uh, I guess, is that part of the auditing process? Is it, is it a fact that knowing that, a, that an event is gonna be audited does that keep people or individuals or suppliers more accountable, do you find, or, or, or not? Definitely. Does it change behavior? It definitely okay. changes behavior. So, and we were audited at the highest level. So this was the first time in the world that, that an event took ISO 2012-1 all the way through a third party audit certification. So we had auditors auditing us, one from England, one from the UK, one from uh, India, and one from the US, and then they were also being audited so that they could achieve the, the third party accreditation to the standard. Um, so, so when we let our, our venue, our catering, our transportation, our event company know that we'll have auditors with us trailing us for a week, um, it definitely, mm -hmm. definitely upped the energy um, and the excitement and also the, the, the willingness and the desire to, to really prove that we're doing our best mm -hmm. and to be able to showcase um, what all of the efforts that we are that we have implemented for the event as well. What was your destination selection process, Jeff? Did you do, go through an RFP process? What were your thoughts? So destination was uh, sort of a, a combination of things. Uh, we uh, we had six different co-chairs uh, who represented sort of different sectors of. Uh, government and business, mm -hmm. uh, notably uh, the governor of California and, uh, and Michael Bloomberg. Uh, so we knew pretty early on that uh, it would most likely be in California. Uh, and so from there, it was sort of a, a process of auditing sort of where the, uh, the best opportunities were. Uh, and San Francisco, obviously known for, uh, for being sort of sustainable and being at the forefront of a lot of green initiatives. And so that uh, ended up just sort of being the, the right choice. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, just adding on to that, you know, site selection, I would say, is one of the most important parts mm -hmm. of a, a sustainable event process. And it allows you to then build on your plan, right? And so we were, we were fortunate that the event was in San Francisco because when we wanted to make commitments like 100% uh, 100 zero emission vehicle transportation fleet, mm -hmm. Uh, both moving our, our attendees, so we had 7,000 attendees, our speakers, so VIP transport, and our production team around, we would only be able to do that in a city that had enough public charging infrastructure in place, right? So we were able to do that, luckily, in San Francisco and achieve that goal. Yeah, we were also lucky that the, you know, the vast majority of power provided to the city of San Francisco comes from uh, power that is, you know, zero uh, greenhouse gas. Yeah. So it's that... That was, you know, another sort of big helpful point. So there's sort of all of these little things that add up to uh, sort of being sort of the most sustainable event. 
Thinking about the US market in particular, in Europe, I mean, we're sitting today at Messe Frankfurt in Germany, and over the years we've worked very closely with a lot of German suppliers around the Messe to improve our own footprint here. So we're now a 100% hydroelectric show. Uh, we send zero waste to landfill, um, and we've learned from them and they've learned from us. But um, I know that's somewhat more of a challenge, if you like, at US destinations. How? How much are those cities or venues that aren't going green, who aren't alert to this, how much are they really missing out on and how much are they going to miss out on in the future if they, if they don't wake up to this, Jamie? So what I like to say is every time we work on a project, whether it's in the US or, or abroad, I mean, we've done shows in Manila and Johannesburg and Rio, um, when part of what, what, what we do is we show that there's a demand for green events, right? There's a demand for venues and destinations that showcase their sustainability commitments. Um, and a lot of times after we've implemented at a venue or within a, a city for a citywide event, they then have this flag that they can stick in the ground and say, we've done it, right? We've, we've implemented zero waste or we've shown that we can do zero emission transport. Um, so it gives them a, a banner to wave to say, bring your green event here. And I think from a, a attracting business point of view, it's a, it's a huge benefit. Um, they also get essentially free consulting because we help them implement the, the plans and, and enhance their systems. And then for the event, you know, for us, we don't want to just have an event for a couple of days or a week and leave. We want to leave a lasting legacy. Mm -hmm. So a lot, in a lot of cases, the, the, in, what we implement stays. And we'll come back to a venue, um, like for example, in, at the Colorado Convention Center in Denver, we worked on the Democratic National Convention there in 2008, the compost recycling landfill, the three bin system that we implemented for a two million square foot convention center still exists today. I, I visited that convention center. So to see that all of the training that we did for the janitorial system and the catering system and the, the bins themselves and the signage themselves still exist, um, is, is really rewarding. Yeah, and the legacy works two ways. You know, it's mm -hmm. tangible things like improving compost systems. There's also a lot of intangible things. Every, you know, every venue, and Jamie can tell you this uh, probably better than even I can, but uh, the venues learn a tremendous amount. And I think a lot of the hesitation uh, that some of them feel uh, is just because they haven't done it before. And so once, once they've done it and they know the right ways to do it, they figure out that it's actually a lot easier than than they would have originally thought. So there's there's a lot of easy things that folks can do to in, you know improve their their carbon put, footprint and make themselves sort of much greener and and attract sort of you know uh, a lot more a lot more business. Let's talk a little bit more about some of those easy wins then. If people are watching this, maybe that there's a champion busting, dying to get out of a venue who's like, I really want to try and activate change within my organization. Mm -hmm. Um, what are the, I want to call them the light green steps, what are the easiest things to get going on where you'll start to see a real impact and you can really mobilize people around? Have you got a sort of favorite, Jeff, that you like to, to tell people about? Uh, I think the, you know, one of the easier things uh, for us were getting rid of single-use plastics. Yep. You know, that was, that was an easy thing to do, you know, committing to using uh, china and, and glass. Uh, you know, we had uh, not you know the largest event of all time, but we had you know well over seven thousand people and folks coming from over a hundred countries, so you know from sort of all sorts of different different backgrounds, and it made it really easy uh, for people. No, nope, you know we didn't hear any complaints about it. Uh, you know people always want want more coffee, but that's uh, that's. <laughs> but uh, we were a zero plastic water right. bottle event, for example. Yeah. Um, we also worked really closely with the chef and the catering mm -hmm. outfit to make sure that we were honoring and supporting our local farmers. So 75% of the menu was sourced within a, a, a couple hundred miles, one, usually 100 miles of the, of the venue, some items from 200 miles. But um, that's, a, that's a great commitment because not only are we helping support the, the local economy, um, we, we are letting people know about it. So when, when folks logged onto their mobile app, we had no printer programs, right. um, they could see that the menu for the day was sourced and the food miles, that their lunch was coming from 60 miles away, for right. example. They knew they were eating fresh food, um, climate friendly, vegetarian fresh food, and it was coming from local farmers. Right. Yeah, we've made some decisions this year at IMEX, but we, we also chose not to go, not to make a big fuss about them. So for instance, we've, uh, we're offering 
some sausage on our menu, but we're offering no red meat. But Great. but but sensitive to the culture, we're actually not telling people. We've just kind of slid it in, and we'll see right. how it goes. Uh, and we're not doing conference bags anymore. So because because right. we all in this industry, you have, get many, you have bags. <laughs> many bags. It's perfectly viable to bring your own bag, bring your own bottle. Sure. And. Um, so that's been, you know, it's an interesting experience and you can experiment with these things. They don't have to be forever, but maybe sometimes you're buying yourself time to find a better product, a less, um, a more environmentally friendly product, but that's what right. we try and trial things. And, you know, in a perfect world, everyone would bring their own sustainably made water bottle, but like we, you know, we recognize that, you know, that probably wasn't going to happen. People, you know, they need to have water. So we ensured that the water bottles that we did give out were sustainably sourced. They were made from recycled aluminum. Uh, they were made, you know, in this case, they were made in the U.S. because we wanted something that was close to the uh, to where we were actually hosting the event, and so that that made a big difference. We also just on another point, we also make sure that we track what we're ordering for the event, and we use a lot of rentals in the case of furniture mm -hmm. and staging. But if there are items that are not rentals that are made specifically for the event or ordered for the event, we have a donation plan. Right. So in our case, we donated um, over seven tons, metric tons of items to the local community. Some of those items were carbon neutral square tiles that we had um, donated. That carpet's are, a big thing. Yeah, mm. carpet that now. Um, that are now in place at six different middle schools in a nearby neighborhood in their libraries. Wonderful. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you so much.